All right, thanks for coming. Uh, so I'm just going to be talking about um, F Sharp without Windows, which is something I've been trying to do for years. And uh, fortunately, Microsoft uh, has also been trying to do this for years, and that now we have things like .NET Core. Um, but I, I stopped using Windows quite a few years ago because I kept playing games, and I figured I would install something like Linux, and that way I can't play them anymore. So, <laughs> so running running things like .NET, uh, I quite like .NET, but I uh, I can't have Windows because I'm not allowed. Um, so it, being able to run it on platforms that aren't uh, Windows is quite quite good for me. Um, so historically, we've always had Mono, um, but Mono is, it works up until the point where it doesn't, and you don't know why. <laughs> um, so .NET Core has really kind of simplified a lot of the stuff in terms of getting F Sharp to work, on win uh, work without Windows quite nice. So we're going to focus a lot on .NET Core and how it helps you kind of get F Sharp up and running, get something going on, a, in this case, we're just going to be doing it on a Mac um, and Linux, because we've got Docker in here as well. Um, this, yeah, so that's kind of been my experience um, with .NET Core as things have progressed. So everything works brilliantly until it doesn't. So, right, so what is .NET Core? So if you're not familiar with it, .NET Core is Microsoft's um, cross-platform .NET framework. So it's not intended to replace the .NET framework. So .NET framework is the .NET framework for the Windows operating system. And .NET Core is the cross-platform implementation. So it supports C Sharp, F Sharp, and it now also supports VB, if that's still a thing for you. Um, they implement the .NET standard. And the .NET standard is basically a contract that says that um, your runtime guarantees certain APIs. Um, so the runtime will guarantee a minimum amount of APIs that you need to run, and all the platforms will implement this. So the idea is it shouldn't matter what runtime you're using, whether it's .NET Core, Mono, or the full .NET framework, you should be able to run any kind of .NET program no matter where you are. So the, pretty much the entry point to .NET Core is the .NET Core command line interface. This is kind of where we get started, so this is how we create projects. Um, before, you really needed Visual Studio, and one of the biggest challenges that made Mono really challenging on, on Mac was that there was no templates for F-Sharp. So you had to kind of create a template on Windows and Visual Studio, copy it across, uh, and then perform some black magic on the GUIDs that it generates and just hack the hell out of the project files. But now, we don't need that anymore because .NET Core is going to generate all our project files for us. Um, we'll deal with talking to NuGet and get everything set up. So .NET Core 2 came out, so I had to alter my slides a bit, like last week. Um, if you're still on .NET Core 1, you need to, and you're running it on Mac, you need to make sure that you've got OpenSSL 1 or greater going, um, because OSX ships with a what is officially now a deprecated version of OpenSSL. Uh, .NET Core 2 actually comes with everything bundled <coughs> inside it. Uh, in terms of the tools, there's really kind of two approaches. Um, I prefer uh, Ionide, which is a plugin for VS Code. Uh, and that gives you everything from IntelliSense, um, code completion, uh, tells you what the types, it puts the little types, hints above the functions. Uh, and Rider, I think, came out either this month or last month, I think. Uh, and Rider is um, JetBrains' solution for doing .NET development on Mac and Linux. So it's built on top of the, Intel, uh, on top of the IntelliJ platform. So what kind of projects can we get started with? So not everything is available for f -sharp, but you can actually add new templates. So if there's stuff in here that's not what you want, you can, uh, and someone's made the template, you can go get it. Um, or the project files are also a lot more simpler now, so you can actually kind of edit them manually a lot. So if we want to get started, we should create, create like a CLI program. So we just need to specify that we want the f -sharp language. Uh, and in this case, we're just saying that we want it to output it to the CLI directory. In this case, this will give us just a nice little simple f -sharp program. Um, and then in .NET Core 1, you have to run restore and before you run the build, because restore will go get all your packages for you. In .NET Core 2, 
um, when you run build, if you haven't run a restore, it automatically runs it for you now. So you can just run .NET build and run on .NET Core 2 and everything will be fine. And yep, there's a little program that we cre um, created in the previous slide. Um, if you're using VS Code, the debugger doesn't actually come out of the box, so i9 doesn't actually come with the debugger. So you actually need to run this debug colon command in VS Code and it will download the mono debugger. So even though you're using .NET Core, you still need mono for some things. Right, and then in VS Code, so if we go across to it, you need to set Set the environment right. So, if we want to like debug a project, oh, the uh, BGA is like. Must be running C sharp. <laughs> Null pointer exceptions. This is why you need maybe types. Right, so yeah, so if we go to the debug here, at the moment we don't have any configuration set up, so we need to configure our project to be a .NET Core environment. This is then going to create our launcher file, which has all the, um, by default, it just creates a bunch of template stuff. So once we've got this, we need to go in here and replace all these kind of substitutions with the path to our actual program. So rather than doing that, let's actually open up the sub project. So this project uses a mono repository, so we need to go down to here. Right, okay. Close. Right, so the launch task is in here. And you can see that if we want to launch the web program, it's going to execute this DLL, but before it does that, it builds a project every time. So what we also have to do is we have to also configure our tasks. Now, there's a bug in .NET Core 1 where it would generate this incompletely, and it would just generate this, and you'd get the most obscure build error you could think of. So you actually need to kind of go in here and tell it that you actually want it to run the build command, otherwise it won't actually build your project for you. Um, adding tests is easy, so you, if you want to add a test project, it's just another project in your file. Um, running them, again, you just need, you, instead of calling run, we're just going to call test on the project. Um, adding and removing dependencies, so we don't have like the kind of GUI NuGet thing inside VS Visual Studio, Visual Studio, sorry, Visual Studio Code, terrible, Microsoft naming, terrible. <laughs> um, so you can just add a package to .NET add uh, the project you want to add it to and then the package you want to add and remove is the same. Um, you can also generate a solution file. I hope that's readable. I'm trying to make it as big as possible. So it's the .NET new solution and then we're just going to give it a name. In this case, we're just going to add all the projects we want for our solution here. There's a slight bug where it will actually generate the wrong direction on the path. It will actually have the backslash instead of forward, so you actually get a compiler error. Um, so if you make them forwards, slashes, it, everything works fine. Um, who's ever tried to create a NuGet package? Um, was it fun? No one put their hand up, so. <laughs> So in, in .NET Core, the uh, creating a NuGet package is, is super simple. You just tell it which project you want and the version and everything is done for you. Like, super simple. Um, so if you want to publish the app, you just run .NET publish. By default, it's going to create what's called a framework dependent, uh, I think it's framework dependent build. So it will create an executable, but the executable you have to run with on a .NET um, framework. So whether that's .NET framework on Windows or .NET Core on Linux and Mac. If you want to publish it, 
So if you want to compile it down to a binary where everything is packaged in with it, you just need to specify the target platforms that you support. Um, and then we just need to publish it with the dash R and then specify the target platform that we want and then we um, get a binary as a result. Uh, there's also Docker files from Microsoft. So if you want to use Docker um, to, as your build process or just as to keep your kind of .NET Core stuff separated, like uh, I was using the .NET Core 2 Docker images to be able to upgrade um, the pro uh, little side project I'm working on. Um, you can't use the nano server. That's a Windows only Docker image. Uh, I found that out by trying to run it on Mac. Uh, so the SDK comes before the build tools included. Um, and then once you've got your program built, you can then export it from Docker into another container and you only need the runtime container to be able to execute the program, so it doesn't contain the build tools. So and it's about 300 megabyte less. So the build tools are about 300 megabytes. Um, and it's fairly easy to kind of get a container up and going. If you're using ASP.NET Core, so there's a F-sharp middleware for ASP.NET Core called Giraffe. So if you haven't played with it before, have a look. But you need to <coughs> specify the, the URL as being 0.0.0.0 instead of localhost. Otherwise, you can't access the, um, the program from outside the container. So some of the limitations on .NET Core at the moment for F-sharp is you, you don't have the type providers. You have to compile them with MS Build, which basically means using Mono on Mac to compile anything that needs a type provider at the moment. They are promising that this should be added sometime in .NET Core 2, so hopefully it comes before .NET Core 2.1. Uh, as we saw with the debugger, Mono is still needed for a few things, so the tooling is, is getting there, so not all the tools are totally .NET Core yet, but with .NET Standard, that doesn't really matter. And that's all, we, that's all you need to kind of get F-sharp going on, on a Mac. Um, I can, any questions? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, .NET Core makes it really simple. All right, thank you. Thank you.